All right. That looks like I've got it almost figured out here. But, uh, yeah. I just want to do a shout out to uh, uh, Michael Bancroft. And I got your book to listen. And I wanted to share this. I got the bookmark with it here. Let's try to get some better light over here. Eh, yeah, what the heck? <laughs> but anyway, there's a. I got the bookmark. I get a closer to the camera here. This is cool. Uh, I got some. But the, this I absolutely love. I love the detail work on the backgrounds. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's like every every little detail in there. Look at all the brickwork around there. This is fantastic. I've got to step up my game and get uh, and do a better job on my backgrounds. I mean, let's see what I'm finding out here. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. Let me go to these buildings. I'm getting a little bit of glare on there. Let me see if I can't change this here. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, 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 that's a big help. But yeah. I got this this light over here that kind of distorts stuff. But I mean look at the detail on that. This is fantastic. Every little detail on the windows. <laughs> Especially the aerial shots where they're where they're jumping back and forth. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to concentrate on doing better backgrounds on my work. And but you've got a winner here, Michael. I love it. Now my project is Renfield book to the Vampire Squad. And Luke Stone helped me get my settings to situated correctly on, on my layout so I've started over on my project which is book one or Malcolm book Renfield book to the vampire squad now when I did book one Malcolm I had no idea comics gate even existed and a friend of mine over in Missouri so you need to check these guys out. You do some good, some good work. And uh, he liked uh, my first book, Malcolm. He said, "Yeah, you really need to get into this." So I, yeah, I'll check it out. So I like what I see, and I want to get more involved. I'm trying to get in doing, you know, joining on your some of your live streams. <laughs> so. Now, Malin cracks me up. <laughs> he, he, he's got a deplorable sense of humor like I do. So it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's great. Uh, that kind of off-color humor. Right? <laughs> Growing up in the South, yeah, I said, I've been right all my life. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I see. But yeah, I've got. Uh, I'm working on one panel now, where Doctor Ranfield's pulling up to Dunning and Insane Asylum, and I've had to look through old pictures of that place, and I finally found. I finally found some pictures of the main office building. So, I'm drawing his model A Ford. Now, you, um, remember, this is set in 1932, Gangsland, Chicago. 
So I can't, I have to have the cars either before, you know, pre-1932 makes or along about that time frame, but I can't be putting 34, 35 Fords or other vehicles in a 1932 timeline. So also I can't put Al Capone in there because Al Capone went to Alcatraz. Well, well he, he was sent to prison. Not Alcatraz yet, but he was in uh, the federal prison in Pennsylvania for tax evasion. And Frank Nitti was running uh, his, his outfit at that time. So uh, the main gangster that I'm featuring in the books is Frank Nitti. And if you've read my first book, it starts out with some of Nitti's men. Um going into a crypt to rob, to rob a crypt where a bunch of money's been, been hid and they inadvertently release this vampire Malcolm well he rips her throats out and uh, he makes uh, McG Eddie McGregor which is like his descendant basically makes him his servant so he's got to do what Malcolm tells him to do. So he puts uh, he puts uh, him under his control. So Malcolm hides 32 coffins all through Chicago. And Dr. Renfield, who is the son of R.M. Renfield, who was killed by Dracula in 1897 from uh, Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula, uh, He's got to find these coffins and hopefully find, catch Malcolm where he can where he can drive a stake through his heart. So that's the game that the sick little game that Malcolm has got. It's like a game of cat and mouse. If Renfield finds Malcolm and kills him, he wins. But if Malcolm kills Renfield, then he wins and Chicago's Chicago is his for the taking. So they gotta stop this guy. But uh, book two leaves off where book one began. So I'm, I'm working on a trilogy. So I haven't decided what to do in book three yet. But basically, he's put together a team that involves Frank Nitty and his gang and some other people. And eventually, I'll include uh, probably... I may put J. Edgar Hoover in there for book at the end of book two. Haven't decided yet. I'm still working on a storyline. But uh, let's see if I can add something here. I'm trying to figure out how in the world am I going to add a background? Hmm. I'm not seeing how to do that here. I'm in the record mode. So maybe. Maybe settings. Uh, maybe virtual background. Okay, well, here's that picture of Nitty I got or Nitty's house. This is one of the pictures from book one. As before I added the balloons and stuff. But, uh, yeah, this is supposed to be Frank Nitty's house. With a couple, some of his guys talking there. And I tried to add uh, the drawing I did of Nitty himself. But as you can see, it's cut the top of his head off. So, <laughs> I still got to figure out how to do all this stuff. But, uh, Mainly, I just needed to do a, you know, do a shout out for Michael Bancroft. Let me know guy's book. And I really love this. And if you haven't got it yet, you need to get the Lucent and whatever campaigns he's working on. Uh, you're really going to enjoy it. So I'm going to try to end this recording and get it uploaded to YouTube and see how it works.
Bye.